Welcome back. We join Mike Eppel right now at his home office via Skype. As we have been all week long, Mike, there is so much to get through today. We're going to get right to it. Good morning to you. Good morning, Melanie. Yes, indeed. The uh, stimulus efforts are now in place, and uh, it's been fascinating to see how the markets have responded to all of the money that is being talked about here by uh, governments worldwide. Uh, we've had the passage in the U.S. Senate of that $2 trillion uh, stimulus plan, the biggest uh, economic response in history for the U.S. government. Still has to go through the Congress and then signed off by U.S. President Donald Trump. That'll happen tomorrow. But nevertheless, when we're talking about that amount of money being injected into an, an economy, it has a ripple effect on the financial markets. And what we've seen here in the previous two trading days, in anticipation of all of this, is one of the biggest... Uh, rallies in market history in a month that has seen the biggest ever moves on a daily basis, plus or minus. The TSX has advanced almost 17% from the lows set on Monday of this week. We are talking about uh, billions of dollars recuperated in stock valuations. Is this the near-term bottom? No one is saying that. It's expected to be volatile for the foreseeable future because we just don't know how bad the economic effects are going to be on uh, not just the Canadian economy, but the, the worldwide economy. So we're not in any way out of the, uh, uh, the, the woods, so to speak, when it comes to market volatility. And in fact, this morning, we are seeing a little bit of a downdraft on the, uh, the stock futures, the forward-looking uh, expectations for today's trading. And the big economic number today will actually be on how many Americans are filing for first-time unemployment benefits. It's expected to be a record, north of one million people over the past week. And this is exactly the near-term of knockoff effect of the pandemic, closing businesses, Americans uh, filing for unemployment benefits. We've seen the numbers here in Canada jump to about a million as well, just in very short order. These will be the biggest numbers on record. Previous uh, economic downturns, even in the Great Depression, it was around 600,000 on a weekly basis. And we're also hearing with the, uh, the Trudeau government's $100 billion-plus stimulus package, the, uh, uh, the expectation that 4 million Canadians will be filing for what is known as the Canada Emergency Response Benefit, uh, $2,000 a month. Interesting note of that, that's actually a taxable benefit. It's not a full 2000 You have to pay $200 in taxes back to the government, so it's about 1800 Still in all, it's getting money into people's pockets. That is the key right now because rent's coming due at the start of the month. And a lot of people are saying, I don't have the money. It's, you know, this, this uh, uh, effect that we have been talking about prior to the pandemic, high debt loads, living paycheck to paycheck. That is certain, simply uh, coming through to the uh, Canadian economy, certainly in the short term. Lots of uh, corporate notes as well this morning. We had uh, what's being called the Boeing bounce. Uh, shares of that aircraft company have its biggest one day move ever yesterday, up 24%, because this is one of the companies that will be lining up to the U.S. government as a distressed company or industry. The aviation industry has just been decimated by the uh, pandemic with flights canceled. And of course, Boeing has had all sorts of problems over the past year with the grounding of the 737 MAX jet. Ford Motor Company getting its uh, credit rating uh, knocked down to a junk bond status. That is the uh, worst possible classification for debt issuance. It means Ford and likely other automakers and companies will have to pay more to borrow money going forward. It raises their interest costs. The automotive sector is certainly another one that is going to see a slowdown in near-term sales. Uh, so will Ford and the other automakers also be looking for government assistance. Apple reportedly going to delay the launch of its next-generation iPhone, the 5G iPhone, which was set for, uh, well, to be unveiled this summer and then released this fall. The Nikkei newspaper in Japan saying that there are internal uh, discussions at Apple delay it for a number of months simply because they've got supply chain issues. Uh, they're looking at, again, alleviating the strain, as all companies are, on trying to get their devices to market right now. And, uh, Melanie, we may have seen the lowest uh, price that we will be seeing for the price for gasoline. Mm -hmm. It uh, went up a little bit last night, three cents uh, to just above 68 cents per liter. The talk is it's going to go up another four cents tomorrow to around 72. I filled up last night for 64 cents. Yes. I've seen it below 60. 
wow. in some jurisdictions. It's been quite remarkable. But the price for oil has stabilized a little bit. And on April 1st as well, the carbon tax uh, goes up. Again, I think another two cents goes up year by year, right, until yeah. 2020. So it's all going to affect uh, the price we pay at the pumps. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so a lot there, Mike. Uh, if people want to follow along, they can also find you uh, at, at Epman on Twitter if you want to see Thank all you. of his updates. Mike, appreciate your time. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Thank you.